All right. Ooh, so camera's over there, if you see it. Huh? <laughs> yes, yeah, like normally I can switch off the avatar, but it's still not really working. <laughs> so tell me. Um, just about me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I'm 22 years old. Um, I used to uh, play in a club when I was like seven to nine years old. So that's like over 10 years ago. Um, since then, only in like schools or like you know basements. Uh -huh. um, I started playing the game last year, but I had like a six month break in between. So really, only like three weeks ish. Um, uh -huh. I'm currently 1,900. Um, I'm struggling about yeah between opponents at around 2,000. Um, mostly because of like spin or um, yeah stuff. Um, I can do like basic shots okay. I think I need a bit more like practice on the the forehand stance. Um, but like in matches, I usually just uh, I just don't think enough, and I like you don't end up moving and missing shots or like not mm. doing the proper stance and so on. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So if you want, we can take a look for a second at your um, just a second your basic strokes mm -hmm. and then uh, and then go from there I'm just gonna see if I can switch my guardian off because uh, yeah, like no. I see when you you do it in your videos right you can reach like uh, 120 easily on your forehand um, yeah. when I try my best I can barely hit a hundred I think I usually when I do it it's more like in the 60 70 range when I hit it normally yeah so I think uh, in general that is the difference between well, maybe you've done it better when you were younger. Like, this is what people can imagine happening, right? So mm -hmm. you you grab the ball and you hit it a little bit upwards, but then when you want to reach those numbers, you really have to realize that you're you're taking the ball and you're pulling it, you're brushing it, right? So I mean, ninety five. Um, so it's really about getting the feeling for that and instead of being scared and just opening the bat more. So you're hitting it from the bottom. It's really even if you notice that it's going into the net, instead of opening up, just adding more topspin. Yeah, so this is, okay, can, can you do this? Oh. All right, so I see you, like I can see even when you do it like this that you're scared of opening the angle. Right. Because you grip it, it's going to go up anyway, right? So, okay. Yes. So what I see as well is like uh, you you might not touch it deep enough, right? Sometimes, and then it drops down, right? right. So you have to really let it go into the rubber to be able to grab it. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's and if you want to feel if there's enough spin on it, you can do like this. And then if you oh. just do the counter side, it should go straight up. That's something that you can do in real oh. life as well. Yeah, there you go. I do have like an old racket with me, but it's like the rubber's kind of gone. It's yeah, not... and it's just going to slide off probably, right? Yeah. Uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, this this can give you a little bit of a feeling of how how it works, you know, how, how you can make it stronger by letting it go deeper into the paddle. Because if you just, I, for me, it's hard not to, have, <laughs> not to not to do it well. But that's basically it. So then everything else is in the game. You're trying to, instead of just touching it like this, you're trying to really brush, right? So that's just touching. That's, it's, a, it's a timing thing, right? So when you hit it, you hit it, but it still bounces up. Right, but when you time it well, it goes directly in the direction that you're playing. Wait, All right? So it's 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 true that a lot of people struggle with this because um, then you know I, I teach the basic strokes which you already control we will check them in a, in a second drives and drives are based more on hitting the ball than spinning the ball but then when we get to spinning up like they, they stay kind of scared of really trusting in like you have to think that when you brush the ball you're really pulling it in the way of almost like maybe 30 degrees off of what your bat is doing right 
So if you if you play it up, it's gonna go way up, right? So you can actually play quite forward and still get it over. Right. So when I was talking about the serves, it's not that easy doing serves while in the game, but um, when you're a bit scared, it still bounces up, right? You know that you're doing it well when the, the ball kind of launches directly in the direction you're you're going for. That's it, that's better. And the more you brush it, the more horizontal you can keep the bat, right? And then it's just about timing, you know? Knowing that you're that you're going to touch it, because if of course if if you're not sure about timing, then maybe you want to do it slower and then it bounces. But you really want to give it a bit of yeah, better. Am I supposed to turn it in when I serve? Um, so yeah, serves that's that's a whole that's a whole story of course. So basically, you you want to free up your wrist, right? And you also want to have your that move a little bit. So you're actually using mainly your index finger and your thumb. You can actually use your uh, middle finger to, to pull back on this, right? So you want this kind of space normally, like in real life, to add that little bit extra when you serve, right? But you can also just use um, your, your index finger and thumb to have a little bit more control. Is there, yeah, I mean, if you look at Zanjike and, and I think Malong as well, they do it this way. So they keep their mm. fingers quite close, but there's other people that they move their fingers entirely for, for the serve, right? And that's a bit different. But I do it more like this as well. And it, it, of course it works best in this game because there's not a lot of space to change your grip. So you just Ooh. add a little bit. Like actually I don't really add a lot because I'm, I'm, I'm scared of letting go. <laughs> that's the idea. I do it mostly with my wrist. And I, I do it with my wrist, but I leave I leave it a little bit, so my wrist is here, so it goes over my wrist, right? Um, but I leave it a little bit of space, so I'm, I'm, not, I'm not stopping the motion of my paddle. Right? Just, just enough so it doesn't fly off. But uh, that's what creates, that, that lets you uh, add a little bit more. So you use your wrist, and then, uh, yeah. And then, of course, the timing. So, yeah, that's good. So what can happen sometimes is when you're starting, you notice that you hit it too high, right? And then mm -hmm. you can let it go a bit lower. Oh. I hit it lower. Like I'm getting mm -hmm. in, in my boundary here, so it's <laughs> pretty weird stuff. Uh, all right, so yeah, that's, that's a good question to start. Uh, let's, let's just uh, try to do a little bit of uh, counter drives. You're in your forehand, I'll do my backhand. All right. So have you used any drills? Uh, yeah, uh, the ones, the 4008.1. Uh, All right, cool. It's very secure. It's very good. So uh, I might see a little bit, uh, how do you say it? Like your arm is a little bit disconnected still from the rest of your body. So I, I see you're like a little bit stiff. Your other arm is kind of hanging as well. So I see you're not really in fluid motion, right? So let me let me just say, I'll start on the back end to explain how where your feet need to be, right? So I'm playing back end towards your forehand. So in this line, this means that I'm gonna be 90 degrees behind the ball for the back end, right? Okay. Um, this line. And then if you wanna play forehand, what you actually wanna do is you wanna be on the same line like the same line, but then move over to the forehand, which will have your, uh, in your case, so if you, if you go to your back end now, go to your back end and put your feet 90 degrees uh, in front of this line, right? And now move over to the forehand, sideways, yeah. And that's it, that's oh. how your feet need to be, right? So you have a little bit of space because on the back end, you're behind the ball and that, that gives you control. It's also why your back end is normally a little bit softer and a little bit weaker. You can do a lot with the wrist and everything, but you can't use as, as much force as in the forehand. In the forehand, you need space, right? To use your body, to make your swing a little bit bigger. Not always, but you need a little bit of space because if you do it here, close, you know, it's not gonna be good. So that's why this foot needs to be a little bit back. Mm -hmm. right? That all depends. Now, if I'm playing over there, that's how it's supposed to be. If I wanna play parallel, I probably open a little bit more, right? 
So it depends on the angle of the incoming ball. Okay. So when your feet are like that, I think I imagine you've already seen videos of shifting weight and all that, right? So yeah. for sure when you're training, you you can always overdo it a little bit to get a, a feeling for it. So what you actually want to do is you want to you keep your, your paddle more or less uh, relaxed and your arm more or less relaxed, like not a, not at 90 degrees, just a little bit more, you know? And then actually when you use, like right now I'm not using my arm, and that's all body, oh. right? So it's weight shift and, you know, my torso. It all comes a little bit forward. And then that's it. And then what you do afterwards is just relax your arm and your wrist, like a little bit more. But in the beginning, for the, for the counter drive, it's almost all body because it gives you a lot of control, all right? Let's see. Anyway. Sorry. That's okay. So, so when I say things like it's always possible that in the beginning it feels unnatural. Um, you have to think you know, maybe something is wrong because the idea is that you let your body like do natural things. So if you feel like it's unnatural in a certain position, maybe you have to think of your wrist and stuff because I can't see everything, right? So you have to think of your pedal as an extension of your arm. Mm -hmm. So it's not, it's not at a different degree than your arm because then you're not going to be able to control it. So it's always kind of in the same uh, direction. All right. That's it. Good. You remember also how to hold your pedal, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah, so fingers, um, index finger, right, yeah. on the bottom here, and then your thumb more or less here. So like the on, thumb... Like on the triangle, not triangle, like the raised part or yeah. further up? Like here, the thing that is going up, okay. it's more or less where you want it to be. But when you play right. back end, you can actually move it up a little bit to so more control, right? Okay. Um, but that's a little bit more advanced, but basically that's it. So. There's differences in grips between forehand and backhand that you can grow into, but you have to watch out because you're always faster if you can use the same grip on both sides. Good. That's good. So yeah, very secure. So what I can say there, I'm just gonna say because a lot of the time this is said way too late. They never told me when I was <laughs> starting out. So that's that's a start, right? Then you have the timing, like the top of the of the of the bounce is probably the, the easiest timing, but you can play with the timing, you can play it whenever you want, but it's just always gonna be a bit different. The easiest is the highest one. But then also you have how you can use your fingers, right? Okay. And that's very advanced. How so you can use your wrist, for example. The wrist in the beginning is just letting it go, right? So instead of blocking your wrist, is leaving it a little bit out, and then you do your stroke with your arm, and then you just let it snap, right? All right. And then the last level, which is higher than my level for sure normally, um, and the moment that you touch the ball, that's when you kind of grab your index finger and your thumb mm -hmm. together. And that gives you like a little extra, extra punch. But you have to do it, and then and then let go right away as well so we can oh. kind of finish <laughs> the stroke it's not easy but like it's the idea of, of using your it's actually in the forehand it's mostly your index finger that is putting pressure so you feel the ball with your finger in the back end it's your thumb right. okay but that's that's higher level but it's something to keep in mind because if you don't think of it maybe your grip will change and then you don't have how do you say it you won't be able to do that kind of stuff anymore because you're already tense so it's very important to try to keep your wrist relaxed in the beginning so you have space to grow afterwards to add a little bit more pressure right so should be like relax like when i relax it like the racket shifts a little like in my hand or yeah tighter. like you have to control that so it, it 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 can shift a little in your hand as long as you know, know where it is of course but you're using the adapter right uh yeah yeah because yeah, otherwise it would just fly off the controller <laughs> you have to grip it more so yeah, um, you have to find a balance, of course, right? So you don't have to let go of the pedal, 
Uh, you have to think of it, yeah, I always forget sometimes, but you have to think of it like this. So if, if you tense up your arm and if you, if you really hold your bat a lot, try moving your wrist. And now relax it and then try to use your wrist. You have way more motion and um, way more range with your wrist if it's not tense. And it's the same with your, your arm, your body, everything. So the more relaxed you can be, the more, you know, um, how do you say it, space you will have to move as well and to, and to accelerate and all that stuff. So it's all stuff that I think is important to just keep in mind from the beginning. doesn't mean that you have to uh, apply it, you know. So what they do in the beginning a lot of the times is saying to keep your wrist stable and all that stuff. So if you notice that you're starting to miss a lot, you can do that a little bit more and worry about that later, but just keep it in mind. Oops. So how, how you create the extra, the extra thing after a while, you know? Because if you do that stiff, it's possible. But it's like a lot of arm work, right? So if you relax, you know, if you relax your wrist, it's much easier, yeah. <laughs> Don't always have to look at the revs because it doesn't always say anything. 130, 120 is, is very good spin already. Okay. Um, and 90 is actually good spin for my back end, I think. All right, let's take a look at your back end for a second. So remember, it's more or less 90 degrees behind the incoming ball. Very solid, but again, it's the same libid as in the forehand. I see the libid disconnected, right? Okay. So in the back end, it's it's not as easy to to use your body because, like I said, you don't have the space to really do it. So it's much it, it's a bit smaller. So you still shift your weight from the outside to the inside, right? A little bit, and you mostly feel it in the shoulders. And that just makes it <laughs> more in motion, right? Are you supposed to like squat down and then go upwards? Uh, here, right now, it's like you always bend your knees a little bit, okay. right? So be able to, to move fast. And here it's more like, uh, how do you say it? I would say right to left, but also it's just kind of turning, right? With your legs. So you go right to left. No, for you, it's left to right. right? Left to right. So uh, you just do this. So it's, it's basically like a small turn. And then once you are playing on backspin balls, that's when you really use your legs, go a little bit lower and then go up. And it's the same with the forehand. You like down up is mostly reserved for coming uh, up to backspin balls. Otherwise it's mostly moving slightly forward, left to the right and right to the left, depending on which side mm -hmm. okay. you're playing from. Right. So you're always kind of moving your body in the direction of your stroke. Now to do it really forward on the back end is not that easy because you might be out of balance. So that's why it's a little bit more to the side. Yeah, I often end up like leaning forwards on my tip toes and they're like, yeah, yeah, out of balance. Yeah. That's why. So also that's why you keep your knees a little bit bent and why it's more uh, left to right instead of uh, back forwards. They used to play backwards forward. That's how I learned to play. But then they also move their feet and they would play like a forehand next to their bodies. Oh. But then the big games sped up too much and then they they were never ready to go to, for the forehand. That's why now we kind of play on the line behind the backhand, forehand open, right? But still, you sometimes you see them when they have to come back all the way from defending, they might still do this and play killers like this, right? But usually they try to stay behind the ball. Okay, um, okay cool. Let's see uh, again your backhand. Okay, now, right now it can be very, very small. So you have to think of this stroke. It's really just trying to guide the ball and to be like, it's supposed to be a secure stroke. So you don't have to do okay. too much. So like it, you kind of try to get hold of the timing in the ball. So it's like, like you can hear it as well. Right? So that's you're trying to go for that timing and everything else is just try to be as fluent as possible. You don't have to do it way back, really just in front of your body, All right? Nice. All right, so 
your arm is up here, so I have a feeling you don't really know what to do with it. <laughs> oh. no, it's no problem, but like you think about it because you might get in your own way. So maybe just keep it low as well, so it's relaxed. Otherwise you might get tired just with this, this arm and you're not using it. So. I mean, you do what is natural. In the end, you, with strokes, with anything, you do what feels best to you. You don't have to, if you're very conscious now that you have to feel, keep this down, don't worry about it. Just don't think about it anymore. But I just noticed it was up there. And it might be in your way at some point. Good. Good. So for any of these strokes, these, these um, controlled drives, I would advise to look a lot at the women's game. Uh -huh. They are very good at doing like their body motions, right? They're very, they're very active. They also do the, the like the extra step. Um, it's a very good example always of seeing how you have to move. Uh, men, lots of times they do train like this, but then once the point starts and matches, they just fly all over the place and it's very hard to copy what they do. Okay. Same for the women though. So don't, don't mistake that because like, sometimes it looks easier, but super fast. <laughs> All right. So, uh, okay. So, like, this is not the, the stroke that we're doing to create a lot of spin. We'll get to that later. All right. So, this is something that you start with. And then, like, for example, when you're warming up, you know, like this. And then after 50 balls, maybe you can try to add a little bit more spin and try to find that brush that we were talking about before, right? Um, but you don't have to worry about that too much. It's easier to start on brushing from a backspin ball, right? To learn it there and then afterwards. Well, actually it's both of the same because you're already doing the right stroke. The only thing you need to do is maybe loosen up your wrist a little bit more and allow it to brush the top of the ball. But if we do this now, it, it might be hard to control, right? Yeah. So you're, you're doing the stroke more or less, but you're kind of holding back. So there's not a lot of extra spin generated. Yeah, there we go. That's why the ball launcher is very useful as well, because you don't have to be scared of missing because it's just going to come and keep coming. So you can miss, 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 and then start making them, you know, and then get a feeling for it. Good. Okay. So let's see. Okay, let's take a look at uh, forehand push. Oh, yeah, for you as well. You can have to. All right, all right, all right. So... Um, let's see. I guess it's not the stroke that I do the best, for sure, not in the game. <laughs> but it's important. I, I, I have the timing down, though. So I might not play it as low as I want. Okay. I can play with the timing a lot, which is very important. So this stroke, even though it looks a bit silly sometimes, is very important for learning the rhythm of the oh. game. All right, so when you go for that forehand, which, which foot goes forward? Uh, my right foot? Yeah. Or should be my left foot? So whenever you, whenever you move into the table, it's always going to be your right foot. Okay. Right. Basically, it's always your right foot that moves first, even if you go backwards. Oh, okay. Um, All right, so it's not So for me, it's different. So I go with my left foot, and when I go back, this is always the first one to go back. Uh, right. Okay. Um, and the same when it goes there, and the idea is the same when I move to the to that side as well. Like it's always it always starts with your leading foot. Okay. Uh, but that's a lot of information. Just, <laughs> but actually it's easy because it's always the same foot, right? Mm -hmm. So whenever you you have doubts about like who how should I move into this, your leading foot, your right foot. Okay. Okay. So you the idea is that you step in and you step out every time because you don't know when, what's coming next, right? So you step in. This stroke, so just like the drive is not really a top spin yet, it's it's just mainly driven. This stroke is actually quite driven as well, right? So you're not really slicing under the ball yet. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, that's why you use to to return serves a lot of the time, you know, and to keep a little bit of uh, intent behind the ball because if you really try to go under it, you know, it might it might slow down a bit, it might go up, and then with a push you can still kind of it more or less straight, get some acceleration, right? Okay. Also, it can help you keep it short because you need more feeling to actually go under and then keep it short. It's not that easy, so um, that can help. So mm -hmm. the timing, 
when you push back, try to get try to go for early timing. So before it's on the highest point, mm -hmm. actually very close to the to the bounce is probably the best idea to keep okay. the control as, and, and and close to the to the net. So I'll explain to you why that is. So if the ball bounces and you wait till it's on the highest point or be or be, uh, or or later, you have to hit it up, right? Which actually yeah. you don't really want to do. You don't want to hit up the ball. But when it's still going up, you can use the momentum of the ball still going up to help mm -hmm. you out, right? That's the idea. You you kind of use the momentum of the ball. There we go. You're going like this, right? Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> you can you can really go a little bit straight. That's why it's called a push, right? So you're not swinging like on the top spins. You're really pushing, right? Okay. That gives you that gives you that extra bit of control. If you notice that it's too far out or you're struggling to get it close to to the net, uh -huh. you can go with your head first, right? So you don't have to worry about that. You can actually play like that too. So you don't have to make an effort to stay beside it. You can go over the ball and do like this, right? Good, 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 good. So you remember what I said before from like opening and closing angles? I'm sure you've learned that as well when you were in the club. So in the case of the push, because you're not really playing with a spin, you, you adapt with changing the angle. So if you notice that the ball is going high, you close it a little bit. And if it, mm -hmm. goes, if it goes into the net, you open it a little bit. That's okay. basically the idea. And then afterwards, when you're slicing, you can compensate with the amount of spin that you put, right? So now it's basically that. You try to do like a straight movement and adapt the angle to what you need. Oh. Training this can feel very boring, but if you don't have it and they serve short, you know, you need to, you need to be able to do something and you can always risk yeah. to flick, right? Mm -hmm. Because if they, if they serve you here and the second bounce is here, that's fine. You have a lot of space. But when you serve, when they serve here and the second bounce is going to bounce here and you don't want to play through the table, uh, flicking from here, low, it's not as easy. Like, it's not like it's impossible, but it's, it's much harder, right? Yeah, I usually end up playing some people who... It's like here, but they just loop through the table. <laughs> yeah, they're cheap, yeah. right? Like, don't worry about them because you know it just makes the game a little bit harder, but that's okay. But like, if you want to yeah, be able to do it in real life, in this case, then in a lot of cases, you actually want to have a good push. And not just a push that you're like, oh, I don't know what's happening, and you leave it up, but like a push with intent. So they're still, you know, so it's still not an easy ball for them. So thinking about the speed of that push and where you want to put it, uh, that can help a lot. So in the elbow, you know, maybe maybe even though it's far, you can still open the angle a little bit, you know, so they have to move. All right. Let's take a look at your back end for a second, your back end push. Oh. So here's the same, right? So like you're kind of going like this, you can still stay on top of, in this case, it's because it's a simple stroke. You don't have to use your body too much. I mean, you can use your body for timing, right? But not really for adding anything because you don't really need it. Yeah. Oh, sorry. That's it. And the same thing, if you need it, you can play the head first. There we go. Good. That's very good. Very good. Very solid. So on both of these sides, you notice that the ball is going up too much because you can't read the effect well. <laughs> a little bit more on the side, right? Okay. Um, side spin gives you a bit more control because you're not going directly in into the spin a lot of the times. Right. That's it. But yeah, that's something you know. I, I'm just telling you as well because it's another level. But mm -hmm. always think of all of these strokes that they're on a continuum, right? They're on a spectrum. 
So it's not always straight, it can be with side spin, not always under all, it's not always totally straight, like everything is somewhere, everywhere. So um, in the beginning it's good to do like the basic things, but then some, you know, try to put something extra in it, you know, for it, right? So you know how, how side spin and back spin interacts when you play. <laughs> also make it easier for you to respond to people doing that, right? Because you understand what's going on. Uh, okay, so you said that you have trouble um, getting into position, not when you're playing actual matches. Yeah. So um, basically, what happens a lot, um, and it happens to me too, is that you actually don't really have a plan when you start your points. Right? Um, and it's normal, it's normal, because when you start out, most of the time you're just like, okay, serve, and then I just see what you do. And I, okay. So the idea is that you kind of build up ideas in your head and I call it like 80, 20%. Um, actually, I don't give it a real name, but it's, <laughs> it's like 80, 20% choices that you make. So when I serve, like I have an 80% idea of me going for a forehand, for example. Mm -hmm. right? When I play in here because I have less space, I can't do it really exactly like that because there's a whole space that I can't use for my forehand. But in real life, I would be like, okay, when I serve like this, if it's going all the way here to here, I'm going to attack it with my forehand. But when mm -hmm. it comes here, I'm going to go for my backhand. Now, the backhand is not going to be a passive shot because I know when it goes there, that's my second option. And usually, depending on what serve that I did, that if they play it there, it's going to be an easier ball because it's going to be hard for them to place it there. And then when, when it does go there, then I should be able to finish, right? It's not always that easy, but the idea is that at least when they play here, you know what you're gonna do, right? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, as as your level grows and your opponent's level grows, then, you know, you have to think more about the point. And then during the point, you have to think of where you place the ball for the next ball and all that stuff. And that's stuff that you can, how do you say it? You can train it in uh, in drills as well, you know? So you automatically know where to play and, and, and how the ball will come back. Okay, so there's a couple of things there because I noticed that as well sometimes when I was not feeling that well, I would, I would serve like this and people would surprise me, right? <laughs> or they would serve and, and, and I would play back like this because I was not secure yet. And that's part of mm -hmm. the problem because if you play back like this, like they don't have that much space to play and the next ball is gonna be easier for you too. So if you're doubting all the time and just trying to keep it on the table, like you're kind of in a losing position already because you're, you're uh, losing the, how do you say it, the momentum. So that's why, Playing with intent, like I'm gonna play like there to the back end and then get ready for something else. Uh, that helps a lot. Um, if you're just waiting to see what happens, it can be very hard to be ready. Also, so in the beginning, for example, if you do a short serve, maybe you don't go too far back, but like one step, and then you can come back in mm -hmm. uh, if they play short. But then if they don't play short, you can take even maybe a little bit more distance to be able to attack. A lot of people, they just stay here you try to attack over the table, but you don't have a lot of time or space here, right? So the idea is that you, you serve and you already move a little bit back. And you can go from there. I'm limited yeah. to this much. Yeah, that's all here. Even if you don't have that much space, you try to do it. So where you were before, that's, that's like, usually people, they put themselves in front of the table and they let their arm hang like in a more or less relaxed position, the one that you use when you do your drive. And actually, I think you can take like half a pedal back or maybe even a full pedal. And that's made more or less like your neutral position. In my, in my case, for example, I go a little bit further back because I need more time. I have my strokes are a bit too big. So I try to play from here. So the reason why I need to step back is because it's much easier to step in to a short ball than to, uh, to go back when the ball is already coming at you, right? So that's why you always try to come in and out so you can move towards the ball instead of the ball coming towards you when you're moving backwards. Yeah, because often because especially uh, here, the, uh, the wall is here. Um, so I can't, like I'm limited to standing here if they shoot in this corner, so I'm kind of just doomed if, if they get into the corner. Yeah, yeah so you kind of have to give in there. there maybe, maybe that's not the place where you're gonna play strong attacks. So what you can do is if you know these things, so this is already another level again, but I think in your case, it might, it might be important or in case of everybody playing this game, you have to think of the angles you create, right? So if you're, uh, if you have trouble there on this side, because there's a wall, if you play with the ball here, 
how far to the to to your left can I play the ball? If you play on this side, if the ball comes here for me, um, I can just sorry, I can just play it straight. That's yeah. it. That's what I can do, right? So if you want to protect that corner, try not to just play it here because I'm gonna open up there. So if you do, like, it's fine. You can open up here, but if you do. Make sure that you move into the table and you're ready to block over the table because there's no space beside it, right? If you, if you, uh, if you change to my forehand, right, but you're all the way back here, you're going to be in trouble. So sometimes you have to think of, I have the same thing. So I cannot move very fast into my forehand. So I try not to give the ball to the back end because then it's very easy to open to my wide forehand and mm -hmm. I can get there. In real life, I could, but in here, I can't. So it's a little bit the same. It doesn't mean that I'm not going to play there or attack there. I am going to when I'm in, in, in control. Like when I'm attacking, I can play basically anywhere. And then when they return, they have to be very good to, to do it quickly and to do it there, right? But if I'm just passing the ball and I know that they will keep attacking, then I have to, if I play there, then I have to move in and be here already before they play the, the ball because otherwise I'm not going to get there. And it's mm -hmm. the same for you on your back end, I guess. So when I'm defending, I should just aim for the middle of the table, right? Um, so it depends. So there's there's different things. Like you you try to play in my body for sure if I'm ready for a forehand. Yep. So usually if they're really good, they're like in a neutral position, so it doesn't really help you because you don't know where. But then you still know if they're like predominantly forehand oriented or backhand oriented. So yep. if they're forehand oriented, instead of playing it here where they can move out the way, you can put it a little bit here so they have to choose forehand or move and be out of position, right? And if they're out of position, you can play to the deep forehand, and they can get there, right? Um, like that's 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 a whole thing of level, uh, a whole thing already. Now I'm I'm just gonna explain you the angle thing for if you do play in a space where you have enough space, right? So you already noticed that when you play on this line, that's the limit of of where I can play, right? But it also opens this angle, right? Your deep, deep forehand, which is which is an issue. So when you play me here, you have to make sure that you move to cover that deep forehand, right? So you have to play me here to protect your back end, but you don't have to forget that you have to cover the deep forehand there too, right? Mm -hmm. So um, that's stuff that you that you have to get used to. I still forget sometimes. Lots of times I'm like, oh yeah, I feel like I'm playing well. I play there from the middle, right? Instead of playing to the body where they're not sure or playing to the forehand, so they play here. I play deep back end and they just block it there and I'm done, right? And it's not like I can't do it. I can do it. I have to move because in this case, when I'm so much out of position for the next ball, if I don't move, I can get there. But if I do move, like I can cover here and I can still come back here, right? But if I just stay here, I'm dead. So um, yeah, it's about shifting, shifting angles. So um, from the point where you are, you always, Try to think of, of a, like, try to create a cone of where you can play. But also, of course, you have to think of the same thing for your opponent. So when you, where you play there, you imagine the cone, and then you position yourself in a way that you leave a little bit more space for your forehand, and you're behind or almost behind everything that they can do to your backhand, right? So when I play to your backhand from here, I'm not going to stand here, right? No. I'm going to stand here in the middle actually becomes a back end for me because I have to cover this one, right? So, and then when I play to your deep forehand, I have to go here and the middle becomes a forehand, probably, right? Okay. I can also play to your middle, you know? And then that's also the reason why people always say to, to play deep on the table if you can when you're attacking, right? Because when you're short and the ball is a little bit high or simple, like from here, I can play, you know, there. You want to be where, right? Yeah, the angle wide open, mm -hmm. and even if, even if you close one side, this angle is way more open. Yeah. Right? So that's why, either when you do play short, keep it low, and but try to get the second bounce to bounce here, not too close, because then they still have that angle. Or make sure that it's nice, deep, and dense, right? To control and to 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 make the cone smaller. Mm -hmm. Way like when you're playing against somebody who you're like. I don't know where the ball is going. I'm always out of position. That's how you can try to control what's happening. All right. So uh, I will I will uh, 
make a little summary of that as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, the angles, that's maybe a bit much, but I think thinking of like the 80-20% thing, that's quite important for you. So you know how you're moving and where you're going. All right. Um, tell me, like, what else did you, did you want to uh, learn about? Uh, I mainly also uh, trouble returning really long serves or like mm -hmm. really spinny serves. I'm not sure like if I should be attacking them because I, th I think sometimes I can attack the spinny serves. Uh, sometimes I get scared and I just end up trying to block and then it just goes everywhere. Um, I've tried mm -hmm. practicing on the, like I can do it somewhat consistently on the, the machine, but every time I get in the actual game and then I just panic. And if they do like really long serves, I, I try to, I have mostly people who stand here and then they serve either down or across. Yeah. So I try to stand like like here so so I can cover both sides, but it's like exactly. it's a bit awkward. Yeah, for the serve it's the same. Like depending on where they stand, you already know the angle that they can do. And the serve they can sometimes open it a little bit more with the side effects to the deep forehand or in your case your deep backhand. But it will be slower so you can get there normally. So you have to think about that same angle and then if you like you don't have to doubt too much. So if, if you know where they're standing, you know where the cone is you know how to position yourself more or less, right? And then uh, you try to stay in a neutral position, right? Maybe not too close to the table, so you're not like surprised when they play deep, but ready to step in if it's short, right? Um, and then when it's long, um, or, or when it's any distance, right? If you're scared and you stop moving your bat, that's when all the effects that they put in uh, goes into your battle. So you need always just at least a little bit of uh, of a of a swing, like just give it a little bit of intent, and it will be much easier to to control the spin. Just let it let it happen. You know, you're just gonna catch everything that they put in. Uh, I'm actually making a video about this now as well about how to deal with uh, side spin. So um, yeah, let's see. I can uh, I can I can show you. So basically, I think it's quite important that you yeah you can attack, but do it controlled. Don't try to really finish the point because you will be dependent on a lot of on, on reading the, the serve very well. Unless you have a lot of power and you're very sure that you can hit it at the right time. Um, so if you don't if you don't have all these things, just try to brush it a little bit more. So a little bit more. Well, you, you're going to learn to brush. That's the next thing, right? So to really, so you do it a little bit controlled. You give a little more bit more arc, so it, gives, it goes a little bit more higher over the net. And you have more margin of error. Because if you try to do, you know, low, it needs to be very precise. Mm -hmm. So that first one, good spin, the next one comes back, and then you can attack stronger. That's the idea. So I'm going to show you something that might be a thing that is bothering you. I'm not sure. So when I serve like this, right, to your forehand, you're probably, like, okay with, or maybe after a while, you get used to it, and you're, you're able to, to brush it up, right? Mm -hmm. So right now I see... That's something that you can work on. You're, you're still doubting that you can brush, so you open the bat a lot, right? Oh, okay. So try to, try to, yeah, I can still see it. But it's, that's something that you just have to train. Yeah, that's good. So it's okay if it goes into the net. Like I said mm -hmm. before, if it goes into the net, but it's like not too fast or anything, you can just add a little bit more, right? Mm -hmm. It's not really about speed. It's just about letting the ball bite a little bit more. Better. That's it. That's it. And then it's it's working on that and getting comfortable. And, mm -hmm. and in your case and in most cases of beginners, is just gaining confidence in the fact that you can yeah. grab the ball and spin it up. So the next level of that is like I'm playing like that, and you're like I can control this, right? But then I do this more towards your body. Mm -hmm. Side spin, you know, you're expecting to just backspin, but because of the side spin. If you can't do your full motion and go all the way into it, it's gonna drop to the to the bottom and to the side. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm gonna explain in the video as well. You need to compensate and then like play a little bit more safe than that. Because even even against high level players, when I do this serve fast to their belly, uh -huh. a lot of the time they wanna they wanna attack it, but they're just a little bit late 
don't hit it well and it goes into the net, right? So <laughs> yeah, I think as well, like sometimes it's not just you, it's the placement that makes it much harder for you and also the side spin. <laughs> so when you start, for example, like, like this to my forehand and I return like this to your backhand in the middle, you're gonna have the same issue, right? Yeah. If I play here, like at a, at a certain level, like you're gonna be able to spin it fine. But when you get it here, you have to move out of the way. And then with the side spin coming in like this, you have to overcompensate. And then if you don't think about that, that can be an issue. But I think in your case, it's really about just learning to be confident in brushing up those balls. Mm -hmm. That's actually, that's something that you can, you can train quite well. So, um, we can talk a little bit about the form as well, because I see because of the speed that you have, the ball comes here, you change the trajectory a little uh, bit. Right? So yeah. you have to think like if you want to touch it like this, you have to be perfect because you're in like, you're hitting the ball when it comes in and it needs to head it at the perfect time. But when you go over the ball, even if it hits it here, you're still going to drag it. If it hits it here, you're still going to drag it into the right position. So it's going to be actually much easier if you if you are confident enough to go nice and over the ball, it's gonna be much <laughs> easier. But it's like when you're a little bit scared, you open up, and that's that's actually makes it much harder, right? So just that's something that in the basic drills, there's like the the backspin balls that you can train on, right? Go a little bit far on the table, like you can start maybe like you're lifting it like this, which is probably what you're doing, and you start adding a little bit spin first upwards, maybe with your legs as well. But then you start closing on top of the ball and going forward. And it's the same for the forehand. First, you can lift it up, and then you start going a little bit more mm -hmm. the ball towards the other side. Exactly. That's it. And I just, but like in all these things, like returning serves and all this stuff, it all depends on the feeling you have for doing those things, of course. Right? Okay. So once you once you have a feeling for that, it's gonna go much easier. <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, yeah, it's time. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I think more or less as well. Like we've 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 talked about most of the stuff that we can talk about. I think for the issues that you had, um, like I said, like don't worry, don't force it too much. Just really try to take your time to start feeling the ball, start understanding what's happening. Um, with all of the strokes and all of look also with uh, from the backspin ball, like you can take it when it's going up still. And then you feel like, oh, I'm getting a little bit of help. It's not that hard to do it. Or you can let it drop down and then you know, use your own stroke to push, to pull it back up. And then you can play with all these timings in every stroke. So when it's like a drive, you can hit it, like, like I said, at the highest time, or you can try to catch it a little bit earlier or a little bit later. And then like, like maybe 80% of the time, try to hit it at the perfect moment, right? But then 20% of the time, just... <laughs> Look what it feels like because when you get that feeling when you get something weird like because a match of table tennis is almost always stuff that's weird right that's why it, it's so much harder to play in a real a real game than a, than, a, than a multiplayer match and use your same techniques right that's because you really have to get a feel for all that weird stuff and then you can do it instead of just being bothered by it all right cool. Hi. so i think i'll i'll i'll, I'll try Today, like tomorrow or, or the day after, maybe to make like a, a very quick small summary, mm -hmm. uh, so you can keep it in mind. I think in the basic drills for now, you have everything that you need. Um, and uh, if you have any questions, you can always uh, yeah. ask me or come back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. thank you very much. No worries. I hope uh, I hope that helped. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what happens to you because uh, <laughs> very cool things in this game. People that train. Hopefully I can break 2,000 at some point. Yeah. For sure, for sure, for sure. But for now, like, really try to enjoy getting the feeling of the ball because that's, that's the nicest thing about table tennis. If you force too much, you're thinking too much about making the point, it can become very uh, frustrating, right? So really try to, like, when you, when you get, like, a backspin ball and you can really feel it and brush it up, like, take joy in that. Like, even if you're not winning that match, like, it, it feels good to be able to read that spin and, and really pull it out. And when you feel good about those strokes, you start looking for them more and doing them more, and then you will start winning more as well. Okay. All right, cool. All right. Thank you. Yeah, thanks a lot. Uh, just one question as well. Uh, I, I, think, I think I recorded all of this.
Uh -huh. So um, if you're fine with it, maybe next week or something, I might I might post it as well. Okay. So people can see it. And then of course yeah. you can watch it as well to, to get a reminder. All right, cool. Perfect. Cool. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Sure.